So, Counsel, you, 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 yeah, I had a similar question. It seemed like you're importing a mens rea requirement into a causation requirement. Are you now withdrawing that? No, I, I did not mean to import a mens rea requirement. I, 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 the, the test is, is there confusion in the United States? Is the confusion linked, directly flowing from the use? And, and that's a proximate cause that's question proximate that's going to go to a jury and they're going to decide what they're going to decide about the reasonable foreseeability. That, and it has nothing to do with the manufacturer's knowledge or intent. That, that's right. Knowledge and intent is not required. It is required for remedies. But again, to, to be clear, the relief that would be available in that circumstance would only be limited to sales to Americans. And I think the flip side is uh, otherwise a company can, from abroad, flood the market in the United States in a way that entirely uh, that diminishes or drastically misuses U.S. goodwill. And just the fact that the, the physical actions occur abroad should not be dispositive, and petitioner recognizes that part of the way, but would draw the difference between the seller in Germany who is shipping directly into the United States as opposed to the seller in Germany who is selling to students who know or don't know but will foreseeably resell. What should we do about steel? So we think that our interpretation lets the court make sense of steel and its further precedence. And that's both because the result in steel would come out the same way under our test and because we do view a, a significant part of the reasoning in steel to focus on consumer confusion, which is the right way to get there. Um, we think the problem with petitioner's approach of just limiting steel to U.S. defendants is that that is not a rule that makes any sense. There's no U.S. defendant requirement in the statute, whereas our reading of steel makes sense of it in that it ties it to something in the statute, consumer it, confusion. It seemed like petitioners uh, were um, conceding to, to the court that their first best solution would be to apply our modern extraterritoriality jurisprudence and be done with steel. What does the government think of that? We agree that you should apply the modern jurisprudence, and we think you can do that without overruling steel, both because it's consistent with the result, the key aspect of the confusion reasoning, and just because of how amorphous steel was. We do think it would be different if steel had set out something that was a specific test. Then that test itself would have stare decisis force. But given, given how steel was actually reasoned and the ability to kind of replicate it using this court's modern framework, we do think that's what the court should let me, do. Let me put it in my own words, see if you agree with it. And you don't have to. Um, that there's no impediment in steel, as you read it, to applying our modern jurisprudence. I, I agree with that. And I do think that uh, our approach is more consistent than petitioners. It, 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 is, it is more true to steel, but, uh, but I, I, I agree fundamentally that there's not an impediment in steel to applying the modern jurisprudence. Thank you, counsel.